Hello, hello, welcome back to another video. We're doing a little bit of a different one today. We've got an RCS major recap video. Recent RCS major happened in Copenhagen. If you guys don't know, you know how RCS works, you play three online qualifiers against teams in your own region. In our case, North America. Every region has their own three qualifiers. The best 16 teams all over the world then qualify and fly out to Copenhagen in this time. Uh, to play an in-person event in front of a crowd, get to meet fans, bigger prize pool, more points on the line for RCS points, and all that good stuff. It's a lot of fun, and, and it's a good time. So we played in Copenhagen this time, and uh, yeah, beautiful city, really nice place. Now I'll get back onto that a little bit later because we are answering some Twitter questions about this major. Sorry for hitting my mic multiple times about this major and about uh, the overall experience. So stay tuned for that at the end of this video. I'm going to be speaking about six series that we played in this major. A couple minutes on each one, talking about you know the highlights and stuff like that, what went right, what went wrong, and all that good stuff. Let's get straight into it. By the way, daily uploads are genuinely back. I know I've probably said this like three times, but they are they are so back. I I'm so I'm going to stay like consistent with this. Let me know forfeits in the comments of things to do. I keep hitting my mic. Jesus. Of things to do if I miss an upload, I need to hear it. Uh, I want to be doing forfeits if I miss one. Stay, keep keep me in check. It's up to you guys and up to me, of course. But I'll make sure to do it. And also, let me know if I'm losing my English accent. I've had an concer a concerningly amount of comments recently telling me I'm losing my English accent. I don't like it. So tell me if I am. I, I need to, I need to hear it. All right, let's get into the video. I've got some background footage for you guys here today. This is a series against Gentlemates, the eventual winners of the event. And spoilers, that means we did lose, and we did lose in this series in the quarterfinal match against them in Game 7. These are just, just two games we won. Usually I show, you know, games we won, lost, and key moments of the tournament, but I'm just going to show this footage of, of two games we played pretty well in and, and won overall just as background because I'm not going to be speaking about any plays in this video in particular. Uh, I'm just going to be doing recaps on all the series because we played quite a lot in this one. Um, so let's get into it and uh, let's get let's get straight talking about power. Right. We open up the series, oh sorry, the major against Team Power. We know who we're playing before the tournament. It's an OC team, the best team to come out of OC in years and their number one seed for this tournament, okay? They went, I think, 63 and 7 in games in their own region, if I'm not wrong. Something like that clearly dominated their region they're looking pretty good we know not to underestimate them which we clearly did in game one we lost 6-3 in that game like I said I, I well I did say it was because of overestimating or underestimating I don't think it was we just started off you know poorly um sometimes that can be due to you know getting getting used to tournament and and the land and the environment because you're on you know different setups from what you're used to and stuff like that um and just getting used to opponents Lost the first game. It wasn't a massive deal in, in my mind personally, in our minds as a team. Just getting used to everything and uh, move on to day, uh, game two, sorry. And we win that one 6-0. We, we win game three 4-0 and we win uh, game four 4-1. Four, so we went 14-1 and one in goals in the last 15 goals of the series. So quite dominant fashion. Um, I don't think anyone played you know, particularly standout in this series. I think we just... Everyone stepped up a little bit individually. We started outspeeding them and just scoring our chances and staying a little bit more solid in midfield uh, as opposed to, uh, you know, as compared to game one where we were very flimsy in that regard. So, yeah, good stuff all around for that first series. Not too much to talk about. Important thing is we won and we had a pretty okay game differential uh, because game differential matters for who you play in the round two and onwards, okay? Now, every team that won their first round is very high level, okay? The top eight teams of this event were extremely strong. So you're gonna have a hard series no matter what. We load into our kind of round two against G2, okay? Our main competitors of the season, our main rivals, and we're feeling pretty good about the series, okay? We've beaten them in the last two times we've played against them. It's currently 2-2 against them at this time, you know, when we're about to play them. And, you know, like I said, the last two times they were our games. Um, so we're feeling pretty good. We win this one in game five, which gives us a bit of momentum uh, in the tournament and against them, which is always really nice. Uh, now beating them more times than we've lost to them, which is really, really good. And going into this series, we open up game one with a loss, actually. Usually we start out pretty strong, but not in this tournament. Um, we've you know, opened to 
two series with the first game loss. Um, so a little bit different there. Now, in that game, I think we conceded a beast mode, uh, double flip reset, flip reset, double tap, sorry, in overtime, I think like 20 seconds in. So, you know, he can have it, it's a good shot. And uh, we lose that game, we go on to game two, where it is another overtime. This is a little bit of a theme in this series because it was very close. We win this one in two and a half minutes into overtime and uh, we go on to game three. And this game, they, they slightly dominated us a little bit. One goal game and they won it, but that being said, they did have a lot of possession and it was a pretty clean game by them and not so much by us. Uh, we didn't have too many chances, if I remember correctly. Go on to game four, we win that again, a one goal differential. And finally, a team scores or sorry, wins a game by more than one goal in this series. And it was us in game five, three, one. Um, I think first killer played really well in this series. I think we played well as a team and we're feeling good. You know, we, we're two and oh in the series and we can breathe. OK, we've done day one. OK, day one is always, you know, what's going to happen in the tournament. It's a bit of like a... A, 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 you know, a taster for the tournament. You know, you see which teams are playing well, which teams are not so play, playing so good at the start. It's nice to be one of those teams that are playing well and, and come out and coming out strong. And you know, going into that two and zero stage for day two with three other teams um, that you can face up against. Now, we play Furia. We can sleep. We can go back to the practice rooms, prep for that match, and you know, sleep nicely because we're two and zero and be comfortable and all that good stuff know who you're playing in advance it's always nice okay we uh we go to bed don't do too much for that night uh play a bit of the game and and wake up the next morning and go into the practice room open up my controller case i carry all my controllers in a case makes it nice and easy one controller for playing one controller for spare and my controller that i use for playing is missing the thumb grip that I've been using for eight years of playing this game, my whole playing time, okay? So what I'm used to completely with playing this game, okay? So this was a massive deal for me, unfortunately, and it, ha it happened at the worst time. You know, I'm very sad it happened. It's, it's one of my, it'll be one of my, you know, biggest kind of regrets or I can, I, well, I could have controlled it clearly. I could have, you know, took back care of it, I guess, but it, I guess it flung off when I was putting my controller back in because it was eight years old. It was getting very old and very, you know, it was falling off easily. Sometimes it was fall off in, in mid regionals, mid game. I had to, I'd have to put it on whilst flipping back in rotation or something. And yeah, it was clearly getting old and, and it just fell off whilst I was putting it uh, on. I think when I was packing up uh, after the, after the G2 series, um, unfortunate stuff. I have to get used to a whole new feel of my controller, basically, uh, you know, getting used to my left thumbstick without a thumb grip um, in two hours. How this tournament worked, how it was set up, was the practice rooms were at the hotel, which is different to most times at lands where they're at the venue. Usually practice rooms are at the venue. The only other exceptions for this was at um, Sweden two years ago, LA two years ago, and Game is 8 two years ago, which isn't RCS. Um, and Game is 8 this year, yeah. Game is 8 always does them at the hotel, which is nice. But for this one, it, it was at the hotel. Usually that's a nice thing, but the venue was 30 minutes away. So teams had to warm up at the hotel for their match, shuttle, you know, get a, get a car ride for 30 minutes with their team. And then they couldn't really play there either because you usually played pretty quickly as soon as you got there. And also, you could only warm up for like 20 minutes. And there were only like four team stations. So 12 PCs total. Teams had to rotate in and out. And all the PCs were together at the slam. Usually at venues, each team has their own practice room almost. Like practice area at least. And, you know, separated by curtains or whatnot. It's at least a bit of privacy. This had no privacy at all at this event, which everyone had to deal with. Um, I didn't like it at first. And in the end, I thought it was okay, to be honest. And I'll get onto that a little bit later on. Um, or in, in more depth uh, when I answer questions from Twitter, but it was it was okay, but we couldn't really warm up. So I had two hours ready to get used to this new thumbstick at the hotel. I was feeling unconfident, you know, completely unconfident, you know, playing with a whole new game. It felt like almost, you know, new mechanics, getting used to the feel of like new con car control. It was, it was disgusting because it changes your you know, flip timing, you know, thumb grip and just general feel of it, of course, is natural or obvious. I mean, 
but it changes flip timing because the you know the thumb grip also raised the control of ever so slightly which changes like you know how how much you move it in and out and stuff it, it wasn't a good time this was one of the most horrible days of playing rock league in my life I felt like i played really badly on this day and um yeah so we go into round three against furia i'm uh like i said feeling confident but we open up game one pretty well okay i score a couple goals i think at least i scored the overtime goal which has me feeling decent closed out the game um and yeah i'm, I'm okay right I've, we've won game one i scored the goal to end it off you know Maybe I'm, I'm playing okay. Going to game two, we lose 4-0. Going to game three, we lose 2-0. Confidence, you know, is clearly uh, obviously down throughout this point. You know, having to get used to something that you've based a lot of your, you know, playing career on or all of your career, playing career on. Sometimes you're, I know it sounds stupid and overdramatic, but your pro players all have, you know, things they hold on to and stuff. This thumb grip, I've held on to this, right? It's what I've been used to. After this tournament, I've had to get used to it and I've had more time and I'm feeling pretty good to be honest in game now without it, but it was hard. It was very hard in this day. One of the most horrible days of my life. You know, I'm very lucky to be able to say that was one of the most horrible days of my life, but it was it was a long day. We lost this series in game five. Okay, um, that that's the series. I don't remember too much from it. I can't tell you too much from it because I was just trying to get by and get it done, um, which isn't the mentality you ever want to have, but it is what I had in this situation. Gone to round four against KC, the number one team out of Europe, the best team going into this tournament, the favorites to win it all. We lose 3-1. We open up game one very strong. And um, again, conf unconfident in this tour in this match, um, you know, as, as hell and, and played pretty poorly, I thought, again. And I, I don't think anyone was playing particularly great at this stage um, on our team. But, it, it you know, we, we lost 3-1. Yeah, it, it, that was a sad one because I can't even remember half the goals. I remember in game three, we, we really could have had the lead. We had um, a 30 second one goal lead and we ended up losing the game in regulation. So a bit of a throw in that game, um, you know, winning with one goal left in, in 30 seconds, you, you should be at least losing in overtime. And even then you shouldn't be losing the game, losing in regulation a collapse has happened, something bad has happened and, and it's not gone well. So we could have been up 2-1 in the series and then maybe we win. Who knows what happens after them? But it's not what happened. We lost and then we lost the final game because um, it was hard to come back at that point. Going into round five, I took the mentality of like, look, you know, I've, I've made a mistake outside of the game at this point by losing this thumb grip. Again, I know it sounds dramatic, but it, it made a, it was a massive deal to me. Um, you know, I, I, I was, I felt stupid. I felt so stupid for losing this. I felt so sad that this is how it would end this tournament. But yeah, I, I was like, okay, that's happened. Let's put it past us for this one. Because if it, if, if we lose, you know, as annoying as it is, I can put it down to other things, right? Which, you know, sometimes I know it's like, are oh, you have, having an excuse? Is that a bad thing? Sometimes it's okay to have stuff like that because it allows you to play a little bit more freely. I played a bit more freely in this one because I was like, dude, some of the things that's happened this tournament, I was like, go, go on, man, Let, let's just have this game. And, and, and we, I played and I played okay in this one. Chronic played very well in this series, shout out to him, um, and, and, and got us through that series, um, played a very good one. So I'm happy with him, happy with Phil him even uh, for that one. And we go on to the top eight, okay? We, we, we win this game 3-1. Uh, complexity, they didn't look too good, I thought. They looked quite like a shell of their, you know, kind of past selves almost. They used to play very aggressive. They played such standard, like, Rock League in this game that, uh, or this series that I was very surprised about. Um, so, yeah, we, we ended up, you know, matching up, uh, having a nice series in that, or a ni nice opponent to play in that one. Move on to top eight where we played Gentlemates. They're 3-0 and in the series, in the, in the score, or in their series, sorry. They have they went 9-2 and two in games. Uh, they've destroyed Falcons 3-0, I think, who beat KC. So they're looking good, okay? Uh, play it as that. However, our scrims against these guys were pretty good. We didn't, you know, we didn't, like, have, I'd say, a winning record against them. Excuse me, I think it was actually perfectly even against these guys. That's what it felt like, at least, in scrims. So we knew that going into the series, we were quite happy to play these guys. 
Scrims were super even. We thought this would be a close game. We thought we'd have a chance at least to uh, to win it. And um, we, we did have a chance. We, we clo come out of the series really, really slowly. Uh, for some reason, this tournament, we kept doing it. 2-0 to open up the, uh, you know, the first 20 seconds of game one. Uh, we can see their goal and then can see their kickoff goal because they had a nice kickoff strat where they send one cheating player to the side. And it was it was a good play by them. We're two 0 down. We end up losing game one. End up losing game two. We win game three, which is the one you're watching right now on screen. We win this game five nil. Okay, and uh, we're, we're feeling pretty good. We win game four, which is the uh, the one you saw at the start of the game or start of the video. We win game five as well, which is what you saw, at, you know, the second game of this video, and and we're feeling pretty good. I was playing actually really well for this this series. I was I was actually happy with how I played, yeah, you know, even in the end. Um, and I, that was a big deal for me because going again going into this day unconfident, you know, unfortunately I was just unconfident in myself. Uh, I couldn't I couldn't not be uh, unfortunately at this stage, you know, having not much practice on a on a new feel. And um, but I opened up the series fairly well, played pretty good, and um, you know I was feeling good. Game six, and we're one 0 up, and then we just we just lose. It, it was bad. It was pretty bad. It, we uh, made some crucial errors. I'll show them. I wasn't gonna, but um, I was gonna show the ones we won. But I actually want to talk about this now. We won. We we scored first. It was a nice uh, play by us. First gets it out of defense, gets a bump on Juicy, which is really nice. I get a 50 on the second man because the second man did a really poor chow. Leaves his third man isolated, so I bump him. Don't have to get the bump. I just have to basically put him off from going down the natural path of a rotation. And that allows our third man to easily score. Chronic, nice shot. And then we got 1-0. We made some pretty bad errors. I made a bad error for the second goal. We made, I don't know, I think I could have, I definitely could have rotated better in this first goal as well. Um, I thought I thought first would have had a touch, but he came off the post, which I think it's it's hard for him to get, but I think he he should have had that one, and so I rotated out for his touch. But that being said, he would land with the ball, so it's not advised to rotate like this. So I'll take I, I'll take blame for this game. And actually, game seven, I played pretty bad. So uh, I played a couple couple poor errors in, in the last two games of this one, um, which happens. But yeah, rotated out here for his touch, which probably shouldn't have done, but I really thought he had it for a counter. Um, I could have played it safer and then just gone for the ball, maybe even had a one one after that. Um, and then in this last goal, unfortunately, I, I get a pretty bad touch in the corner. I thought I'd have a safe, just single jump pop here uh, to our corner, but I end up putting it instead to not to my teammate make him awkward and put it to our, our opponent so cool bad uh you know plays by us in defense and uh bad touch by me in in the second goal and we throw away this game which is unfortunate um because we had a massive lead you know one goal lead in the first 30 seconds is is a big deal going into a game where you're up in the series and we we couldn't close it out we have game seven and and we we lose that 2-1 as well or, or 3-1 i think uh one of the two and yeah, it, it's disappointing to end like that. Um, we played a pretty decent series overall, like okay-ish. We, we had some crucial mistakes, some crucial goals. So, you know, it was positives and negatives on both ends that we can take away from, I think, which is the main thing. Um, and yeah, we end the tournament with a top eight. Um, we're, we're pretty, you know, bummed out the result, but we're still feeling confident. That's the main thing. We we know that like we can work harder than we have um, for sure. So that you, you take positives from things. This is a shot I could have scored for sure. Definitely tough with two defenders in, one covering high, one covering low, but I could have placed it like top right, maybe a tattoo saves that, but I could have placed it slightly better and could have had a better scoring chance there. But yeah, we're feeling confident still. And that's the main thing coming out of the, the major, top eight, you know, we, I had some unforeseen kind of things that we wouldn't, you know, plan for, which was annoying. And don't get me wrong, it's more annoying for me than than for anyone else. Um, I do want to say that it, it was sad for me. You know, one of the one of the saddest things that could have happened, but it is what it is. Um, you know, we we end up losing, and uh, and that's that. I'm gonna answer some questions on Twitter as we end up uh, kind of finishing off this video. 
and I'm going to be talking a little bit about mentality with this tournament, other stuff, all that, all that good stuff. Let's get into it. I've got some. Uh, I've got a game from G2 gentlemen's here. Uh, I'll show it from Juicy's point of view because he was the MVP of this tournament. Played extremely well, so shout out to him. Um, question from Cheese, pro player from Luminosity. What do you do to mentally prepare for an important series? Cheese is a newish player onto the pro scene, so probably why he's asking this question. So I want to say to him, like, I mean, one, it comes with experience. You know, when I went, when I first came into RCS, it's like you can't mentally prepare for something you don't know what's what feels like, right? It's impossible. Okay, you have other experiences in life that you can, you know, kind of attach things to. For me, I had, you know, other sports tournaments and stuff like that that you can attach things to, but it's never truly uh, the same, right? So it, it, it's one, you have to use things in the past, okay? You, you always have to take the positives away. So you remind yourself of, of what you've done in the past and stuff like that. That's usually one of my main things. You can do that by looking at things. A lot of, one of the best things to do is actually looking at past uh, replays or past, uh, you know, important moments that you're proud about and happy about um, how you, with how you're playing or how you're feeling at the time of other people, how they're playing, how they felt when they won, stuff like that. All that stuff is is good for like visualization, sorry, visualization in my opinion. Um, and then other things, how to mentally prepare for an important series. I take all the, all the care out of it. I know that sounds weird. A lot of players, a lot of the community, you know, the, the fans, uh, I, I don't want to say it like um, acting like I you know, know more or I do the right thing and this is the only way to do it. But that's my whole point. A lot of the community think there's one way to do things, right? It's like you, these players, they have to, you know, play like their, you know, their life is on the line and stuff. Sometimes that just doesn't work for people. That doesn't work for me, I don't think. Like, I, I, I like taking the care and the importance out of series personally. That's how I've always dealt with things better. And trust me, I've tried other ways. Um, that's what I've learned over the years. And um, I've played enough tournaments now to not really care what the, the best mentality is. I just do what's best for me personally. And, and what works for me is taking the care of it, right? You don't die if you lose the series. Like you, you, don't, you don't die. No one dies that you know if you lose a series. And so what tru truly, Am I going to think back in, you know, 10 years time and go, you know, I really wish I beat, you know, um, I, I really wish I beat this this team in, in round two of Swiss and, you know, in this RCS tournament that I qualified for Swiss through, through that Swiss stage anyway. And even if I didn't qualify, I then played another tournament. And even if I didn't play another tournament, I had fun with it anyway. It's like, I know it's like, oh, you know, that maybe that's not a winning mentality, but if it gets you to calm down and play better and win more because of it, then what is a winner mentality? Is it the one where you truly, you know, play like you're, you're gonna, you know, die if you don't win the series or like the, the, it's the only thing that matters in the world and that makes you play more nervous and put more attention to it and put more emphasis on it, which makes you jittery and you can't play well mechanically, which ends up losing more. Is that a winning mentality or a loser mentality, right? So yeah, that, that's how at least I think of things. Um, I've tried every way. Coming on to RCS, you know, I, I played with uh, Stormtroopers, Dead Monster and Polar. And I, I was, you know, I, I don't know, sounds like, I thought I was the best on the team, right? I played uh, pretty well on that team. So I had a lot of confidence. You have confidence when you're playing well, right? And when you think you're the best, okay? When I went into Dignitas after that first split, I started to play more unconfidently because, uh, as compared to that first split because I was no longer the best on the team. In fact, I was the worst, okay? So it, it was very different. And so I tried multiple things, you know? Trust me, everything you, you, know, you know about, like playing confidently and stuff, you listen to motivational speeches, all that cliche stuff, I've tried it, especially in that one split in my second split of RCS. Didn't work, I always played nervous. Still had a pretty good split. I actually found my footing after the first two regionals in that one played really well because I started learning more about myself and how I, how I deal with things. My mum, I think, actually um, told me, like, no one dies. No one, no one dies from these series. Like, that's truly what, like, all that matters, right? It's like, and that's, that changed my whole perspective on things. So it's always your parents that get you to think differently. So shout out my parents anyway. 
Let's go on to question two, because that was a long-winded one, and I'm sure you guys are, are getting bored of the video, so I'll answer a few more and, and end, end this one. Uh, Mew asks, uh, world champion coach, um, BDS coach, you know, coach that Seiku Extra Monkey Moon team a couple years back to a world championship uh, victory, so very prestigious Rock League coach and coach in esports in general. Yes, what are the biggest mental struggles you encountered this split a major? Good luck for the rest of the split. Well, thank you. Um, biggest mental struggle was that, that thumb grip. Uh, oh my God. And that was, like I said, one of the worst days of my life. So that one, um, or one of the worst Rock League days at least, feeling like I was playing, I felt like I was playing Fortnite, I swear to God. And um, so yeah, that, that one. And then other struggles for this split. I played a really bad series against G2 in the first grand finals of the regional, of the, sorry, the first regional grand finals. I played a really, really bad series, probably one of the worst series of my life. So I was like very unconfident from that. Um, so I had to overcome that very quickly. And I did for regional two, I thought I played a lot, lot better. Even though we had a worse result points wise, thought I played a lot better, at least a lot more confidently and felt like more, a bit more like myself. And that, uh, you know, that was a hard thing to overcome. So yeah, bad loss in, in, a, in a regional was tough to um, overcome, um, you know, because you lose confidence in yourself every time you play worse you every time you play badly you, you'll lose confidence and lose a little bit more so yeah how to how to overcome that and I'm, I'm glad i did and i actually um worked with a uh, a performance coach in that regard so shout shout to him um but that that he, he was really good help um other questions what were the scrims like and which teams were the strongest so going into the major um also which teams surprise you in scrims both in a positive and negative way Okay, so this is a bit of a harsh question, negative way, but I don't care anymore. Rule one looked really bad in the scrims, I'll just say it point blank. Um, I, we only played them once, so it is hard to tell from one scrim, but I think we like 7 0 them. We, it was, and it wasn't a pretty 7 0 either. Sometimes 7 0 can be okay, but it, it wasn't pretty. Um, they didn't look like they were going to play well for the tournament, and they didn't. It's just how it work sometimes teams have bad tournaments it is way it's not that deep so they, they looked pretty weak um strongest teams general mates looked we, we looked even with them but i could tell by their gameplay they looked strong i thought we played quite well against them whenever we scrimmed them uh and if we played slightly worse they would have you know the scrim would have gone differently but it was it was fairly even but you could tell they were looking really really good um i think that kc we only scrimmed them once but they looked good and then other teams, it was pretty standard. So Casey and Jammates, I'd say we're looking like the best. Um, but that's from one team's perspective and one player's perspective. You ask Chronic and First Killer, you know, the same thing, who played the exact same teams as scrims, and they would give you answers for different teams probably. So, you know, it, it's always different. Uh, you ask different teams as well. They'll say, some will say BDS and some will say G2 and stuff like that. Falcons, you know, whereas other teams have different opinions. So those are the two teams I'll give and one team for negative. Seeing no one on Gentlemates as a ones main, which would you say is most important in threes? Being good at ones or a strong mental? A strong mental isn't important for the threes game mode, okay? It's important for competition in general, so, you know, every game mode and, and, and RCS in particular because it's a tournament, right? So it's not, but it's not particularly important for the threes game mode, but I, I do understand what you mean in that regard. Um, but that being said, Strong mental isn't what changes, gets a team to win. Like, a strong mental, I don't know. Usually the better, the more skilled team will win, okay? Now, they can be more skilled mechanically, they can be more skilled mentally in terms of how they play the game, uh, but I assume you mean uh, strong mental in terms of like how you bounce back from things. You can't bounce back if you can't, actually bounce back i know that sounds stupid but like if you don't have the skill to do it you just can't right and sometimes that is the case so i don't know being it's neither of those things you know you don't have to be good at ones to be good at threes all these players are very good at ones i'll say that by the way Itachi, seiku and, and juicy they're, they're very good ones players if they wanted to they're just good rock league players and they're good with each other so it's a that's a bit of a poor answer i know but i'm not going to delve dive too deep into that one today um you don't have to be a ones main to play well in threes. You don't have to have a strong mental to play well in threes. Both of those things are positives if you can do both of them, okay? You're not going to 
have negatives by being a good ones player. You're not going to get neg have negatives by having a good mentor, okay? But you can thrive and succeed without either of those things. Um, you'll probably just have to be slightly better at other things, okay? So everyone plays into their own strengths and everyone avoids their own weaknesses. That's kind of what pros do. It's, you know, what separates pros from other people. They, they play into their strengths le way better than the average player does. What was the best food or restaurant you tried whilst in Copenhagen? So I didn't have any food that was particularly like life-changing in Copenhagen. Um, so none, but we went to a restaurant the day we lost. Um, it was me, my girlfriend and my family. So my, my parents, and my brother, they were, they were there with me in Copenhagen. It was really nice to see them after three months of not seeing them since I live in a different continent. So it was good to see them. Same with my girlfriend, hadn't seen her in three months. So really nice time, went to a restaurant uh, after we had lost, you know, and needed cheering up. So I might throw some pictures on the screen, maybe even some videos. We we went to this place and it, it just, it was, you know, 80, like, no, not 80. It was like, it was like 50 people crowded into like this kind of smallish room. Definitely had no business, you know, being the amount of people being sat in there as there was. Crammed in, like those kind of vibes are really nice. And you know, music. The the host was was super welcoming. And then music starts getting a little bit louder, and this guy, someone just starts walking out in this this you know costume. And he had he had a, this this host had a pope costume on. And he, this guy was about sixty. He gets onto the table. He starts dancing. We think he's gonna like fall off at any moment. He starts DJing, uh, and the whole the whole restaurant kind of like started you know getting up and dancing. It was it was a good time. Um, so that was probably my, my best time, uh, best restaurant at least from, from Copenhagen. But I, I didn't really didn't really experience too much too much great food. I'll, I'll say that maybe I'm maybe I missed out, um, and and I'll have to I'll have to go back. Uh, let me let me switch replays really quickly before we end off on a couple couple uh, co couple questions. I've I've made this video way too long. This is a cool question. If you removed all teams slash players that made the major from RSS completely. How do you think the re the regions will stack up at the next major? Would EU still be on top? Would the gap between regions lessen or get larger? Now, I assume, uh, I mean, it's pretty obvious in the question, I guess, but my, my assumption is, you know, all the teams that made it, they're no longer allowed to play. How are the best, who are the next best teams? Which region is it? Okay, so it would stay the same, I'm pretty sure. Um, I think the best regions go Europe, NA, South America, MENA, and then, uh, and then OC, and then APAC, and SSA. I think it would stay pretty the same. Um, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, yeah. I know it's a boring answer, I'm sorry, but it, it would stay the exact same. Um, yeah, it, it would. Mina and Sam wouldn't change, NA and EU wouldn't change. The best, the next best European teams are better than the next best NA, so yeah, I don't, I don't think anything changes, so sorry. It was a good question, boring answer from me. I think the gap between EU and NA would lessen. I think EU just has incredible top t top uh, teams at the top of the ranking. Although, I think I think us and G2 can definitely compete. Of course, I'm going to say that, but I, I do believe it. I think Luminosity and OG in the third and fourth slot are a step below. So I think EU have a clear cut, you know, top tier teams. So I think the gap would lessen because those top teams wouldn't be allowed to play. Um, yeah, th that's what I'll say. Do you think NA brought their best teams to the major? And then someone else asked, would SSG do better? I can't see where that one is right now, but I'll have it up on screen for you guys. Um, do I think SSG would do better than Luminosity or OG? Uh, is the question. Mm, I'm in the minority that think that... I don't know. I, I played SSG three times in this, in this split. I beat them three times. I... I think OG and Luminosity are better. I definitely think Luminosity are. I think there's an argument for maybe not with OG, but I don't know. OG like did well in the last very very well in the last couple of regionals. Like I don't know. It's it's hard to say. I personally don't think SG would have done much better. Um, yeah, that's that's been my opinion when people started asking this question after the first after the second or third regional. It stayed my opinion throughout. Um, so I, I think NA brought their best teams to the major. Um, but yeah, simple as that. And then lastly, 
How did Blast handle everything from the player viewpoint? I heard some complaints about practice room computers uh, being in, or practice computers being in the hallway. Just overall thoughts about Blast. Okay, I'll end this here and I'll, I'll end it on a nice note. Blast, so this tournament, it started off, you know, there were a bunch of issues. And every tournament has issues, but there were more issues at this tournament. The, the practice room PCs were just stuttering for everyone. However, and, and, and more issues and stuff like that. However, Blast were so fast at, at getting these issues sorted and responding in communication, way better than we've ever seen. So I think overall, I would rather have a tournament that has more issues at the start, but gets solved so quickly and you feel like you're being heard to and listened to and appreciated rather than, you know, less issues, but they're slow to respond on them. And, you know, they, they, it doesn't get solved if it does, you know, get tried to be fixed. It's not solved and issues throughout and throughout. Okay, so I think Blast did a fantastic job. Um, and I'm not just saying that. I think they did absolutely incredible with this tournament. Um, you know, we, we got to the venue and we saw there were only 12 PCs and each, each team didn't have their own practice room. They had to swap teams in, swap teams out. However, I started to think, I was like, this isn't that bad, man. Like, it's, it's not that bad. Every team's on an even playing field, which I don't think is a good argument for for most, you know, cases that this argument or this, uh, you know, uh, is line of thinking is used in. I don't think, oh, just because every team is on an even playing field, that means it's okay to happen. That doesn't always make sense. But I think in this case, over time, I, I did start to think like that a little bit and I felt okay with it. Um, and and yeah, it, it, the tournament went really smoothly from players' point of view uh, for me personally from a couple issues on arrival but they got solved like that so shout out to blast for putting on a good tournament shout out to you guys for watching and shout out to you guys for watching this video as well i hope you guys did enjoy that. that that was a long one that was a long one i didn't intend for it to go that long but i'm just gonna i'm gonna keep it man I, this is for you know the, I, I think we have maybe about maybe this video gets between 20 and 50 thousand views if it, if it does bad it's probably on the lower end maybe even slightly low if it does really bad good on the higher end i think maybe 200 people are watching at this point in the video a long video i'm just gonna throw it in and keep it like that you know maybe youtube will like me or hate me for it but it's for you guys that enjoy a little bit more info i don't think it was particularly well structured but i hope you guys did enjoy it me just talking to the camera and rambling all about the major uh, guys, if you did enjoy it, please do leave a like and subscribe. We're very, very close to 200k. So close to 200k. Um, and I'll see you guys in, in the next one. Take care. Take care.